Hey all you space cats, welcome to the Black Hole Podcast, Season 7, Episode 13. I'm Mitch Miller, your host and presidential candidate for U.S. President. I am the most neutral candidate in the world, maybe the most neutral person in the world, and I'm the most transparent candidate to come around in a very long time, I can assure you of that. And frankly, I think... um, the military should support, protect, and possibly even fund neutral candidates, people that can be vetted, and it can be shown that they've positioned themselves neutrally within their society. I think if each military of each nation supported a neutral candidate or neutral candidates, we'd have a much more intelligent society and a much less adversarial society. And if the military's goal is to be a peacekeeper, right, that's what every military's goal should be, is to be a peacekeeper, um, to keep the peace, then it falls in line that they would support neutral candidates, especially as an alternative to two hostile political parties that are both communists in nature. You would think you would want to put up a neutral candidate or many neutral candidates that uh, are willing to make an intelligent society. So uh, that's my opinion, but uh, I put it out there. So if we build this Periscope platform, the voting platform that brings transparency to the government, right? But essentially it's a voting platform. I've said, I've proposed it from the bottom up, from county, local, state, and now I'm proposing it from top down as the president. We vote on the highest positions and have a popular tally of who should be in what position. But if we build this periscope in the United States, and we have to start with the United States being transparent. Um, There's plenty of corruption in the United States, and we like to criticize other countries for it. But you need to point the finger back at yourself here, because if we build this platform, um, think of the opportunities that we have to stabilize other places, right? If we have a prototype voting platform like this, and the goal is, as I said, I would never replace the the bubble sheet system of voting in the United States. I believe it's the most secure um, system, especially if they're being scanned by voting machines that are not able to connect to the Internet in any way. This is truly represents each individual's vote. If our goal is, like, we can, we can, we're not going to replace it in the United States. We're going to incorporate a little bit of Periscope into possibly the uh, petition process I've proposed, but that's only so that we can get put pressure on the two co- corporate communist parties, the Republicans and the Democrats, to make it even so that every candidate has to receive the exact same amount of signatures to be on the ballot. That's equality. That's what our country is supposed to be based on. But district by district, it is different. Independent candidates, third-party candidates, require more signatures to be put on the ballot than the Democrats and the Republicans. So we're not going to change the bubble sheets in the United States. But in places like Ukraine, currently in a conflict war, um, Haiti that's having upheaval right now, We could deploy the Periscope platform on people's mobile devices. We can uh, secure their um, information, you know, their identity in some way and allow them to establish a direct democracy government where they vote on most topics and vote on their elected officials um, and then work to establish the bubble sheets, the brick and mortar uh, locations to vote through the bubble sheets. And um, so that's an opportunity if we just build this platform. That's why I think the government should help me build it. Um, And we can stabilize war-torn places, you know, and have a a democracy pretty much instantly. Now, the, the key is we would locate the servers for these 
for each platform in the nation of conflict, right, in the nation of subject. So we're not going to just deploy this from the United States. Um, the servers, the infrastructure for the mobile devices and everything will be located in that country. That way, if if it fails, if, if people don't like this form of government, this democracy, they can destroy the, the servers and go back to this archaic republic-style system that keeps really insane people in power. Um, and that's, again, that's if Ukraine and places like Haiti will have us, will allow us, if they will grant us the permission to try this prototype voting platform in their sovereign land, I graciously ask for permission to do that. Um, I don't want to overstep my bounds, but I believe I have real solutions to bringing peace to these places and to the world, and that's what we should be working towards, both as uh, elected officials and as the military. So I just want to point out, the private sector says the government mismanages everything, right? We have one tier of our communist, corporate communist regime here in the United States that always says the government mismanages everything. They mismanage everything, right? This is easy to do. This is low-hanging fruit because it's open to the public. It's open in public information. Most of the stuff the government does is open in public information, so it's easy for these executives, for these managers to say you're mismanaging things because the information is there, it's open, it's public, it's reported on daily. If corporations had to operate as openly as the government, I believe we'd find just as much mis mismanagement, if not more. But they don't have to be transparent. And there's nothing in, I've said this before, there's nothing in capitalist doctrine that says that companies shouldn't be transparent they just it's you know why do we let companies operate like the military operates and total secrecy it's it's insane so i just wanted to make that comment on mismanagement in the government how it's low-hanging fruit and how these people point this out to keep us distracted to say the government is horrible and so on and so forth so but I'm all for small government, right? Republicans are supposed to be for small government. I'm all for s small government. Um, I think technology can get us to a small, convenient government, right? Maybe not artificial intelligence, but smart technology can get us to a small, convenient government. But the way I would do it is very uh, apprehensively. I would eliminate government positions using a democratic process. These people that are eliminated would receive a stipend for many years to remain trained in the technologies in case we decide, frankly, in case we decide endless software updates is a scam, right? Um, look, if, if you didn't do online banking and made purchases on the internet, right? If you just used paper statements from your bank and shopped at brick and mortar stores and swiped your card, dipped your card at these brick and mortar stores, um, you wouldn't need to pay for secure cybersecurity, probably, right? Or you wouldn't need to pay as much. Um, these stores, these brick and mortar stores, pay for the cybersecurity to make sure that their cards aren't compromised. Um, your bank, again, if you have online banking and you go to 15 cafes and connect to the Wi-Fi, that's where you're running a secure. So, what I'm saying is, is that this is this is a scam. We don't have to push forward with the great new society that the techie and tech technology people say is going to happen because they're not structuring it correctly and securely. They want you to pay for cybersecurity, and I'm not going to let the government get scammed by this, right? 
endless software updates, new hardware every two every year. Um, I'm going to use the power of the government to find intelligent software and hardware that lasts for 50 years. I'm going to find electronics manufacturers that will commit to this. And I'm going to argue in the budget that it's worth the investment rather than paying security agencies and intelligence agencies to protect our our systems and we're going to compare and contrast how much we spend a year doing that compared to investing in some hard, hardware and software that's going to last 30, 40, 50 years. And we're not going to give up our legacy systems like MS-DOS, right? So we're creating a small, efficient government, convenient government, but we're going to do it in an intelligent way. And we're not going to give up these legacy systems, these MS-DOS systems that are still running some of the government systems. Um, we're going to set up a backup communication system using disks, whether they're USB or um, SD disks, celluloid film, and the U.S. postal system. That's before we ever even think about giving up these legacy systems that are operating on the government uh, internet system. And if you think about it, film, I'm a film studies guy. Film can hold so much information. It's the original HD format. You could put tons of information on a 10 foot piece of film, right? So I think Hollywood has failed us by abandoning film. I think they should have worked with electronics manufacturers to develop. Uh, well, just for instance, um, eight millimeter projectors to project your Super 8 film that are incorporate some digital technology, but all the optics and everything are still analog, right? And cameras that are smarter and things like that. And they did do some of that, but they could have. They're they're abandoning film, and I think we should incorporate it into some of our legacy communication systems to make a smart, intelligent, and a good backup for the government systems in the United States of America. So sometimes, look, sometimes you want someone a little paranoid in a leadership position because they're going to make sure that there's redundancies as we make a smaller government. We're going to make sure that if we decide it's a scam and that we're being attacked by going with all these public-private partnerships and their software and their hardware, right? We can have people already trained uh, to step in and take over the positions again until we get stabilized. So we're going to get to a small government with multiple backup plans and people ready to step in. Now the last thing I want to talk about is artificial intelligence. I've made my arguments that a grievance system, worldwide grievance system, should be established using artificial intelligence. That's the only ethical way. I've proposed a couple interesting art style projects for AI. But at, at the end of the day, look, artificial intelligence means the devaluation and abandonment of intelligent people and keeps stupid people in power. That's what AI is. That's what it does. Think about it. Back in the day, you used to have to pay people to do math. If you couldn't do the math, you'd pay people that could do math in their head, and you paid them well to do the math in their head for your business, for your personal, whatever. Then the calculator came along, and you could pay the same people well to do more math. They could do a lot more math, right? Then the computer and the Internet came along and anyone could look up math equations and, and formulas and do math you know anybody any any person in the public could pretty much do the same math but the people with it memorized could still do it faster so they had value you still valued and paid them well for doing that math now artificial intelligence 
is doing all the complex math and eliminating the high value math positions. So these stupid people just pay machines, pay for machines to be built that can do all the complex math and they stay in power. This is ridiculous. So I just wanted to end with that. Um, until next time, I wish you peace, prosperity, and homeostasis.